Welcome everyone to our introduction to GWIS Education live webinar um, this evening. Um, we hope, we really want to thank you all for taking time to be part of this webinar. Um, and we also want to let you know that you will have a chance, hopefully at the end, to ask some questions. Uh, and also during the webinar, if you have questions, all you need to do is to click on that little button. Um, in the top right hand corner and type in your question and send it throughout the webinar if you, if you would like and we will try to get to it either one i'll respond independently to you or we'll share it with the group also please notice that there's two handouts up there so you can download those um, either during the webinar but they will be posted on our web page after the webinar is over with um, Tonight, our presenter is Beth Smith. She's going to be our trainer. And if we are lucky enough, we may have a special guest if she's able to break away as a customer that she'll be online tonight to be able to answer questions and share her thoughts. But with that, we want to, um, got a lot planned, so we're going to get started. And I'm going to turn it over to Beth. Good evening, everybody. I hope all is well in your neck of the woods. Um, happy Wednesday hump day. Uh, this is an introduction to GWIS and I looked at the registration uh, list and I know we have a mix of people on tonight from all over the United States. Some of you are customers, some of you are not customers, some of you might have been customers in the past. So I'm going to try to provide as much um, information as I can that will be relevant to everyone on this call. But like Sherry said, if you have a question, particularly like if you're a customer and there's something you would really like to know, um, please type it in the question box because I will be stopping periodically, periodically to take questions and also to have you share your thoughts and your ideas and information as we go along. So for those of you who are not familiar with GWIS, we are a company that was founded in 2012 with the goal of providing materials for family child care. Um, that does not mean that if you're part of a center, you couldn't use GWIS. It just means when we created GWIS and we write the curriculum, we have family child care providers in mind. And we know that when you're a family child care provider, you have a very unique situation where you have a mixed age group. Um, you're in your home. Most of you work alone. You don't have anybody to rely on but yourself. And you're like a one-armed paper hanger someday. So um, when we created GWIS, our goal was to give you a helping hand in the area of curriculum. Our curriculum is approved in many different states for QRIS programs. Um, some states have a list of approved curriculum like Florida or Illinois or Pennsylvania. Others have just recommended lists. And then all of you have state standards and we do align with state standards across the United States. If you scroll down on this page, there's a map. And when you get down to the US map, you can click on your particular state and see how we align to your particular standards. Um, so with all of that said, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to go over our, look at our user's guide, because I want you to know what's in there. That's our training manual. So if you're a customer, it's something you should be very familiar with. If you are not a customer, it's something that you'll want to take a look at if you decide to use GWIS, because there's a lot of information in there. Then we're actually going to go into a teaching guide and look at our lesson plans and talk about how does GWIS address the needs of a mixed age group? How do we address all 10 developmental areas within our lesson plans? And why we're different than maybe some other programs you may have used or may have seen. And we're going to have lots of time also for questions and answers. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to our product and I'm going to go to that user's guide. Now, you will notice that everything that we do at GWIS is on our website. We are entirely digital. Everything we do lives right here. So even if you become a customer, the curriculum materials live right here. They're PDF files that you simply click, then you can download and save to your computer and choose to print. Some of our customers choose to print everything. Some of our customers just choose to save it on their computer or look at it on their tablet. That is totally up to you. So this is a good example of that. This is our user's guide, and it is a PDF file, which means that you can choose whether you want to view this right here on our website. You can save it 
Um, I'm on a PC, so here's where I would go to download and save this to my computer. If I wanted to print it, I would go here. If you're on a Mac, it might look a little different. If you're on a different operating system, um, it might look a little different, but all of them would be similar in that there's going to be a place to save it and there's going to be a place to download it. So like I said, this is our training manual. Um, and when you become a customer of GWiz, this is something that you should be very familiar with. There are many sections in here. Um, your role, individualization and authentic assessment, developmental areas and learning indicators, the philosophy and research behind the curriculum, how we meet the needs of all children, in the GWIS curriculum and then implementing. We're not going to spend a ton of time on all these different sections because that would take all night. But what I do want to do is make you aware of what is in each section so that you can go back and you can review it at your, at your own whenever you would like to. This is also one of the handouts that's in the handout box on the right that you can click and download and save it to your computer or if you chose to print it out you certainly can do that it is 73 pages i'll warn you now um, so first why gwiz so when we created gwiz we wanted to create a curriculum that was designed for family child care so we knew there were some things we had to keep in mind first of all we wanted it to be very economical we know there are curriculum programs out there that cost hundreds of dollars a month we knew the family child care providers work on a really tight budget and don't have extra hundreds of dollars a month usually um, we wanted to prepare the children both for school and for life but in a way that is developmentally appropriate and hands-on we wanted to be aligned and approved with state standards because we knew that that was very important to do that. We wanted it to be interactive and super easy to use, but most importantly, when we did our test market, we wanted it to address all ages. That was the one thing we heard over and over and over again from providers when we were doing our test marketing was that they could not find a curriculum that addressed all ages. And it was a real struggle because it was expensive to buy more than one, plus it was all but impossible for one person to implement like two or three different curriculum programs. So when we created GWiz, that was our number one goal, was to create a curriculum that addressed all ages. So GWiz covers infants all the way through school age, and when we get into the lesson plans, I'll show you exactly how we do that. Here are some testimonials that you may wanna read. And then the first section is about your role. Um, in this section, we talk about questioning, modeling language, teachable moments, uh, and again, I don't want to spend a lot of time going through every single section because it would take too long, but I do want to talk a little bit about asking questions. We know that majority of you are evaluated, especially if you're part of a QRIS program, um, you have an environmental assessment that's done of your program that probably is either the class or the FICRs. And we know that instructional support or instructional, um, I forget what the other one that is they call it, is part of that. Asking questions that engage children in back and forth conversations is a big part of that environmental assessment. So it's one of the things that they're looking for is how do you engage with the children? What type of engagement are you having? Is that engagement um, spurring the children to think creatively and in different directions? So this is something we build into the lesson plans to give you a helping hand and I'll show you how we do that. The same would be true of modeling language. There are tips in the lesson plans every single day to help you model language and, in, and within the activities themselves, we give you ideas on how to model language. This is also extremely important if you're working with children who are ELL or DLL and have English as a second language um, because the way you model language is, is a big part of how they learn English. Uh, and then teaching intentionally. One of the things I talk about when I do training is if you don't know why you're doing something, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. So the first bullet point of every experience in the GWIS curriculum explains the why behind it, because understanding what goals you have for every activity that you do is so important. So again, we give you a helping hand there. We use picture codes to connect to the developmental areas, but we also explain in the first bullet point why you're doing things. This just explains what teachable moments are, and most of you probably already know what they are and probably have lots of them going on every day. Um, this is also a way for us to talk about our ongoing training and professional development in this section. We have something called the cohort, which is what 
this training is actually a part of, but we do training on all sorts of topics. We have a webinar about diversity, we've done the why behind experiences, we've done making math meaningful, and all of those are posted on our website. I'll show you where they are, and it's all free. Um, if you're in the state of Pennsylvania, we are part of their PD registry, and we're looking into being part of others as well. Um, this explains how the cohort works and a little bit about it. And this is just what I touched on a little bit ago. We also have two very helpful booklets. This one ties in also with class and Vickers, talking about the environment and your role in the environment. And then this one is about parent involvement, family engagement, and gee whiz. This section is about individualization and authentic assessment. We could take an entire webinar on this, but this is talking about anecdotal notes and assessment. Now, we get asked all the time about a, a formal assessment tool, such as ages and stages or gold, um, whatever the, it might be that you use in your program. We work with any of those. When we created GWiz, I took a look at all the different assessment tools out there, and I was like, you know what, if we cover all the 10 developmental areas and the skills that are part of those developmental areas, it won't matter what assessment tool a provider chooses to use. Their children should do quite well because we're touching on what they need to touch on. So really, the choice is up to you in terms of what formal assessment you want to use in your curriculum with your, with your program. Um, we know in some states there are lists you have to choose from, and other programs you might be told you have to use this one just know that regardless of which assessment you're using in terms of a formal assessment tool because we're touching on all the developmental areas your children should do quite well we also know it's important to individualize and at GWIZ we look at it as a five-step approach where you observe you reflect you plan you do and you reflect again and this is described in the next two pages here, each of those steps. I'm not gonna go through and read these to you, but it is something you would wanna take a look at. This would be appropriate for anyone to take a look at, regardless of whether they're using GWiz. This explains what an anecdotal note is. And when I talk about anecdotal notes, um, when I do training on this, I talk about it's like you're, you're, you're making a video and it's absolutely what you see and what you hear, not what you think you see and hear. That comes next as a reflection. So this section talks about what an anecdotal note is and then what a reflection is, which is when you do step back and you're like, oh, I just observed this, I just heard this, what did I learn from that? And what does that tell me about this child's development in this particular area? So this talks about how you can plan based on anecdotal notes and reflections. We also, even for those of you who are, are with GWiz and have maybe been for quite a while, have a new component we just added in, and it was either November or December, called our Customized Individualized Lesson Planning Sheet. This came about because a customer in Ohio needed to document how she was individualizing and customizing the activities in the GWIS curriculum. And she was writing in her teacher's guide and it was a big mess. So we came up with this form and I'll show you more of what it looks like. But basically you put the children's names across here. Each day it has the activities GWIS has planned. And then in these boxes, you can write how you're gonna individualize. We have this available as a Word document. So if you use Word, you can actually type in these boxes so you don't have to handwrite it or it's available as a PDF so you can print it out and write in the boxes but that's a new component and I want you to know that's something that we take very seriously at GWiz if you have an idea that you think would be great a something that we could add to the curriculum or something we could change or make better we want to hear from you because that's how we continue to make G the GWiz curriculum a even better fit for family child care providers this section talks about putting all of that together your anecdotal notes, your reflections. And here's our observe and reflect grid. This is, a, this is part of this document that you can print out this page as many times as you need to so you can record your anecdotal notes. And again, this is not a document that's just available to customers, it's available to anyone. Here's a sample of what that anecdotal note might look like once you complete it. And then here's our individualization web, a blank one. Each unit in the GWIS curriculum has a specific individualization web that's customized to that particular unit, and I'll show you what that looks like later. 
And here's a sample. The individualization web is a way for you to take the GWIS unit and adapt and modify it to each individual child based on their interests. Maybe they have an area of development they're really working on. So you can customize the GWIS curriculum to each individual child's needs and interests. And this talks about what I talked about earlier with um, standardized assessments. All right, I'm going to stop right there for just one second and see if we have any questions before we go into the developmental areas the GWIS curriculum addresses. So if you if you have a question, just type it up there in that question box. We've had a couple of um, questions around a couple of people are not connected via the audio, so um, which they can't hear me right now, but I did send out a um, I text and I, so we're working in the background trying to get people connected. If for some reason you should be able to either be using your phone or your computer to be connected. Um, yeah, and that happens sometimes. It 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 can be very temperamental. <laughs> so you kind of have to make. If you cannot hear, I'll tell you this: when I log on, I have to choose up in the upper right hand corner computer audio it automatically defaults to the phone. So if you haven't clicked on computer audio, then that might be why if you're trying to listen through your computer, you can't hear. So look and see in the upper right which one is clicked for you and um, that might solve the problem. Um, I am gonna send, just so everyone is not freaking out, I'm gonna send a message to everyone that this is being recorded. If you can't hear it tonight, you will be able to come back in and listen. Um, I don't have, I don't see any questions for you right now. Mostly all the questions are about um, audio, Beth. There okay. are no other questions about that. Okay, all right. And Sherry, I think our guest speaker is having a little <laughs> trouble finding her email, so maybe you can help her out in the background. <laughs> Already have, that's all. Okay, perfect. All right, well, I'm gonna keep on moving and talk about the developmental levels um, and the developmental areas, excuse me. GWIS addresses all 10 developmental areas, and this graphic shows you the areas we address. This section of the user's guide also talks about how each one of those sections, what it is and what it looks like. And so I'm going to just show you one of those pages, and again, this is something you can go back at and look at on your own. So in this box, we have language development which is um, just describing what language development is. And you'll notice this program symbol. These show up in our lesson plans. So I'll point them out when we get there. But this talks about language development. And then this box talks about what it might look like for different ages. So we go through all the 10 developmental areas like that. Literacy knowledge, which would be knowledge about uh, books and phon phonological awareness, letters, letter sounds, beginning writing, concepts about print, math knowledge, which encompasses everything from number concepts and positional concepts and estimation. You can see them all right over here. Here's the program symbol for that. Science knowledge, and there's the symbol for that. Logic and reasoning. Approaches to learning, which is things like curiosity and persistence and cooperation. Social studies knowledge. And social and emotional development, which is so important. You also see this symbol here. Um, this symbol, when you see it in our lesson plans, indicates that that activity or that experience addresses character education. And in the GWIS curriculum, the areas of character education that we incorporate into the lessons are kindness, respect, responsibility, and honesty. Creative arts, which is everything from dramatic play and music to fine arts, and physical development and health. So those are the 10 areas that are in the GWIS curriculum. Then what we have here on the next couple pages is we take each area, like language development, here's the speech bubble symbol, and we break it down into specific skills. In the back of each teaching guide, there's a chart, and you'll see these codes. So you know specifically with each activity that we plan or each experience that we have in the lesson plans exactly what skills you're addressing. So these two pages have all your learning indicators.
And this explains how it all looks. And you'll see this when we get into the lesson plan. So at the top of every day, you're going to have what the unit is, the focus, and then you're going to have this cumulative list. And what this means is if you do all the experiences GWIS has planned for the day, in this case, on day one, you would address language development, approaches to learning, literacy knowledge, creative arts, social and emotional, logic and reasoning, physical development and health, math knowledge, science knowledge, and music. Okay, and then let's say this is an experience in that particular day, one of the experiences we have planned. If you did building blocks of friendship as an activity, you would address language, approaches to learning, social, emotional, logic and reasoning, physical development and health, math knowledge, and science knowledge. So I'll show you what that looks like when we get in the actual lesson plans, but this is our way of helping you connect the experiences and activities that GWIS has planned with the 10 developmental areas. We also indicate if something is a large motor or a get moving activity, something that can be or should be taken outside, and then here's the character education symbol again. Okay, before I go to philosophy, research, and more, does anyone have any questions about the 10 developmental areas that GWIS addresses and how we do that? Again, type them in. I can see people are figuring out how to connect, but. Um, again, if you've got questions, type them in the box. Um, no questions yet, Beth, but... Um, okay, all righty. I'm going to keep on rolling. All right, so the next section in the user's guide has all the information about the philosophy and research behind the GWIS curriculum. We keep updating this, so it keeps changing. Um, our philosophy does not change. Our philosophers, Piaget, Vygotsky, um, Erickson and Slamansky, those all stay the same. But this section right here, we keep updating um, because research keeps coming out about child development, about early childhood education. So as new research comes up that fits in with the way we do things at GWIS, we add it to this part of this document. And it's quite extensive. It's, it's divided up by different um, topics like language rich environments or learning during play, um, promoting social and emotional development. So I'm not going to spend time going through here, but just know that we keep updating this because we want it to be current. That's the beauty of being a digital curriculum is we can do that. We also do look at the NAFCC's position statements as well as the NAEYC. This page talks about developmentally appropriate practices and what they look like. And then the next section is all about meeting the needs of all children in GWIS. We know as family child care providers that many of you have so many different cultures. Um, you may have children that speak different languages. You may have children that, are, um, that have a disability or a suspected delay. And so this section talks about how you can learn more about the children, how you can incorporate what you know about their families and about them in overall into the GWIS curriculum. We have a webinar called Exploring Diversity that's extremely helpful when learning about diversity and making sure that your program is reflecting the diversity of the children in your group. Um, this talks about gathering information about the families you may have and some tools that GWIS provides to help you do that. This talks about cultural responsiveness, what it is, and how you can make sure that your, that your program is culturally responsive. And here's a, something that you could even use as a tool when you have new families that are coming into your program, some questions that you might want to ask them. This is a tool, a printable, that you may print as many as you need of called All About My Weekend. It's a tool that's designed that you can use it two ways actually. One, you could send it home on Friday and encourage the parents or guardians to fill it out on, so that they can bring it back on Monday to let you know how that weekend went because you, you all know on Monday morning when they walk in that door you're never quite sure what happened over the weekend. Did they nap? Did they not nap? Were they at grandma's house? Were they out late? What went on? So this is a tool you can use to help with that or some providers will actually hand it to the parents on Monday morning and have them quickly fill it out just so they have a heads up as to how things went. Um, but it's, it's available to anyone to print again from this guide and it is available also in Spanish. 
This talks about linguistic response, responsiveness. Again, we know that many children have two languages and some may even have three languages. So this talks about how you can make sure that your program is linguistically responsive. There's several pages on this. And then the next section talks about disability suspected delays and how you can incorporate what you know about the children into the GWIS curriculum by adapting and modifying experiences, um, how you can uh, alter your interactions with children, adult to adult, child to child, and also examining the environment. And it goes on to talking more about curriculum adaptations. This is something we could do an entire webinar on, but there's a lot of information in this guide. And then we get into the section about implementing. Um, we're not going to even go through this section because what I want to do is actually go into a teacher's guide so that you can see how the lesson plans look. But before I do that, does anybody have any questions whatsoever about the things that you saw within this user's guide? Beth, there was one question, and I apologize because I've been answering other questions, but um, so it probably goes back one or two sections, but it was, what about us here in the States that the weather won't allow us to go outside? <laughs> yeah, lately here we've been having a roller coaster of weather where one day it's cold, wet, and the next day it's sunny and warm. Um, what we do normally is majority of the experiences during the, I would say, September through May curriculum um, are optional inside outside activities. Then when we get into the summer, we're assuming that the majority of people can get outside. Now, the reverse is true. Obviously, if you're in Florida where it's super hot, you might have to do your outside activities early in the morning or later in the day when it's not so hot. Um, but we do try to make them so that most of them can be an optional do them outside. Now, obviously, if we're doing something with water play and, you know, we would not maybe this time of year suggest getting your bathing suits on and going outside. Um, we might suggest water play, but in that case, it might be water table or like a um, under the bed box filled with water, you know, like a storage container, something like that. Um, because we do know that that, that is an issue um, for many people at this time of year that, you know, getting outside is iffy at best. I would love to plan some activities where people go out and play in the snow, but that isn't going to happen in Miami. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question. And let me just, that, okay. Um, I also realized that the lesson is for birth to four years. Is there anything in the lesson plans for children over four? Yes. Um, and I'm going to get into the lesson plans and I'll show you where the school age experiences are, but I'll also show you where we have some things for what I call more advanced preschoolers. Those would be children who are getting ready to go to kindergarten. So yes, we'll get to that. And that's all we got right now. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out the user's guide. And just to review, this is one of the handouts that you can download, or it is always available under our products. You'll see it right there. The other handout that we have is our catalog. It has a lot of information in there about the different components that are part of the curriculum. It has the units that we're going to be covering for this year. Um, so if you would like to, you can either download it here or view it here on our website or um, Sherry has it as a handout. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to sign in. And this is what you would do if you were a GWIS customer to actually get to the curriculum. So I went to the green sign in button and I click sign in and I add, entered what I hope is my password. And I did. Now this new tab has showed up which says GWE customers. And I'm going to go over here to this month's units. And currently, the units that we have up are the January units. We, are, we just started posting a very short video that's a review of what the units are going to be about. Um, and that will always be right here at the top. So it's just a short video if you want to see the preview. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our first unit for January, which is Awesome Opposites. Each 
month has two units and each unit is 10 days so that's 20 days of experiences and uh, actually there's so much in there that it could be well more than 20 days um, I'm going to go into the English spot files because I do not speak Spanish but we will talk about what's in the Spanish files if you needed those So it just starts with a little introduction about what the unit's going to be about, and then I'm going to open our teacher's guide. And again, if you are a customer, we encourage you to download and save all of these files to your computer. I would also encourage you to back them up to a flash drive, to an external hard drive. I use the cloud just because it's easier, and I have a Google, I have a Gmail account, and it's free. Um, that way, if something happens to your computer, you have a backup. And then if you wanted to print it, you could print it here. Now, you can print it in color, you can print it in black and white, you can print it two-sided, you can print it you know, one-sided, whatever works for you. I do know that we have some customers that will go to their, um, their CCR and our agency has a resource room where they're allowed to print for free. So they will just go print it out there. Um, so that's totally up to you. Others will just view it on their computer and never print it out at all. I mean, that's your choice. That's the beauty of it being this way is you can decide what you want to do. So the unit always starts with an introduction. And in this yellow box, we remind you to of anything that's important coming up, like we're going to have an opposite day. We also remind you to look at the materials list for things you need to prep or gather ahead of time. Here's the table of contents that just covers what this unit's going to be about and what was concluded. Here are all those program symbols, and they're really important because with each experience, you're going to see these little picture codes. So it's important for you to know, like when you see the little hand, you know it's physical development and health. When you see the stack of books, you know it's literacy knowledge. And again, get moving outside and character education. Here's a grid that is all the experiences that are planned for the 10 days. And some of our providers will actually just print this one page and post it so that parents can see what's coming up. The school age experiences are down here in the box at the bottom. And then we go into our first day. So I'm gonna slow down just a bit here. So again, you'll notice we don't have dates up here. And that's intentional. You can actually use these units anytime. So like Awesome Opposites is a unit you could do anytime you wanted to do it. Um, you could download the files. Let's say you don't have time to do it right now, uh, but you could save it and do it later. So anyway, it always starts out with the unit, the focus, and then again, here's that cumulative list, right? So today, if you do all the experiences planned, you're gonna do social and emotional, language, physical development and health, approaches to learning, literacy knowledge, science knowledge, math knowledge, creative arts, and logic and reasoning. You're gonna hit on all those developmental areas if you do the experiences we have planned today. We always have a health and safety tip, we always have a teaching tip, and we have a transition idea. And this transition idea is a way for you to physically and mentally move the children from one experience to the other that ties in with what you're talking about today. Remember earlier we talked about modeling language and how that's so important. Well, we give you vocabulary here, and that's not vocabulary that we're going to print on a vocabulary card or anything like that. We want you to use these words in conversations with children because as they hear you use them in context, even if they're nonverbal, they will build vocabulary skills that they will then use once they are verbal. And then these are some other ideas on how you can model language as you do the other experiences throughout the day. So over here on this side, we have our exploring together. You can think of that like your group time. We used to call it circle time, but then we decided, well, you know what? It's really not like you're just talking and the children are just listening. It's really like everybody's kind of exploring and learning together. It's very hands-on, it's very interactive. So we changed the name to exploring together. This one happens to be a get moving, which means the children are gonna be moving around. They're gonna be building gross modal motor skills and so here are the areas of development for this activity so when you do this exploring together you'll do language social and emotional science physical development and health literacy math logic and reasoning and approaches to learning you'll notice that this is in red we put anything in red that might need a little extra time to prepare so that you know that you're going to need a little bit of extra time and then again this first bullet point talks about the goal so as you share the story, the children will build receptive language skills and vocabulary. In addition, they will practice listening skills and self-regulation. 
So there are your skills. Here we have the questions. We talked about that too in environmental assessments and how they want you to engage in, with children in back and forth conversations. These, a lot of these are open-ended questions. Like, why do you think Mr. Opposite gets things mixed up? Do you think Mr. Opposite is silly? Why or why not? So we're asking children to explain their ideas and their, and their thoughts. Yes, if you have nonverbal children, they're not going to answer these. But if you have some verbal children, they're going to serve as role models for those that are nonverbal. So this just goes through the experience. And sometimes we have an extension, which means you can take this activity and extend it throughout the day. And then we move on to the second part, which are our small group experiences, which are big and little art and sorting by size. Some of these will be totally child directed. You'll set out the, the materials and the children will take it in any way they would like to. Some of them you'll be more of an active role model within, um, but with all of them, we want you to engage in conversations with children. So we have more questions and more tips for engaging right here. Um, and you'll see that some of them, like sorting by size, are leveled, all right? Now, when I say toddler two, young three, and older three, fours, advanced preschoolers, this is their developmental age, not their chronological age. As you all know all too well, you can have two-year-olds that are chronologically two, but one two-year-old might behave more like a three-year-old and one two-year-old might behave more like a toddler. So what I encourage you to do is read all the options and then think about each child and say, well, you know what? I think Rachel really would do better with this, but I think that um, Jose would really do better with this. So you know your children the best. And so what I encourage you to do is just read them and then figure out which one you think would work best for each individual child. Then down here, we have our infant experience. This is designed for babies. Now, does it mean it just is for babies? Absolutely not. I have a feeling that your toddlers and twos would probably like this so you are so big action rhyme just as much as your babies, but it's designed for infants. Um, so this is just one day. So then you go on to the next day, which is day two, and you're gonna have all the same things. You're gonna have your health and safety, teaching, transition, modeling language, you're exploring together. And then you move on to the next day and you'll have your two small group experiences or your center experiences and you'll have your infant down here. And this continues like this for 10 days. So what I'm gonna do is just bear with me while I scroll. Um, when I have GoToWebinar open, it covers up my little toolbar so I can't grab a hold of my, <laughs> my cursor and pull things down, but hopefully I won't make anybody too dizzy. So we have 10 days of experiences just like this one. And then we get into, someone asked about older children we get into our school age experiences. So right here. So when we created GWiz, we asked if people wanted school age experiences and overwhelmingly people said, yes, they did. So these are designed for those children who come after school. They are educational, but there's also a lot of fun in them. And you can choose whether or not you want to do all of these, some of these, but each one of these experiences extends for another day. And that's because children who are older are able to start an experience one day and carry it over. Because they might have homework or they might have something else going on, so they might not be able to get it all done in one day. And that's okay. They're old enough that they can handle that. We still have the questions, though, just like we did with the younger children, because it's important to engage these children in conversations as well. So there are six experiences for school age activities in these pages that follow the 10 days. And you can choose whether you use all of them, some of them. That's up to you. Then we get into our preparation for our story props. In the first unit, every month we have a story with props. In the second unit, we have a teaching tool instead of a story, and we also have a puppet friend. So for this one, because it's the first unit of January, you have a story called Mr. Opposite. So the props are in a different file, but here's the text that you will read when you share the story with the children. And Mr. Opposite, man, he just gets all mixed up. Every time he's supposed to do one thing, he does the opposite. Um, we also give you some extension ideas to do with the story props, so if you want to use them in a different way. 
Then here are the directions for the Make It Sheets. Our Make It Sheets are totally optional. You do not need to use these if you so choose. They're not written into the lesson plans in any way. They are meant to be a tool to help you communicate with parents and guardians what's been going on in the program and also have them extend that learning about what you've been talking about. So this is a book about opposites that you would print out and the children could put together and then they can read it with mom and dad or grandma, grandpa, uncle, aunt, cousin, older brother, sister at home. This one is a game they play with opposites and these are the cards so you can print them out and then they put them in a lunch bag and they pull them out. So again, they're, this totally optional. If it's available in English and Spanish, as both of these are because they have text, those files for the Make It Sheets in Spanish would be under the Spanish tab. Here are some additional experiences for children who are ready to go to kindergarten. I mentioned these earlier. They take things in a deeper direction regarding letters, writing, creative writing, and then some more advanced math, in this case, addition and subtraction. Um, these, again, would be for children who, who you feel are more advanced <clears throat> and ready to take things a step further. We also have a letters and literacy booklet, which is new that comes with each unit, and that helps you integrate an exposure to letters and letter sounds into the activities in a meaningful way, and I'll show you that in just a second. Here's that chart I was explaining. So here's where we take the activity, meeting Mr. Opposite, and you'll see all those codes that we saw in the user's guide. This links back to those specific skills. So if you are in a state where you need to show how you're addressing specific skills, this would be the page you would want to share because it tells you exactly what skills, along with the pages in the user's guide that detail what LD1 means. Um, and then it goes on to the next page we have our school age experiences right here with the codes that address them. We provide a book list, so if you want to go to the library, you can go to a library and find some books that reinforce the unit. All of our songs and <clears throat> excuse me, songs and poems are in the back because they normally just don't fit. Um, and then sometimes we have extras we put in the back, just things that we think might be helpful for the experiences that you're going to be doing with the children. So if there is a printable that's ex that I think would be helpful, I know one time we were doing a farm unit and we were doing a game called Lost Sheep. So I just gave you a whole page full of sheep that you then cut apart and taped to blocks and hid and the children found. So if there's things like that that I think would be helpful, they would be in the back of the teacher's guide. All right, so I've done enough talking and I probably need a drink of water. So I wanna just take a second right now after going through the teacher's guide and see if anybody has any questions about the lesson plans and how they're arranged and how we address all different ages. Okay, um, no one's typing anything in right now, but again, take your time. We'll address it as soon as you know we can if we don't get it right away. Okay, Beth, we don't have any questions okay. about that. Okay. All right, cool. Thank you. All right, so then you just go on to each of the different components. So remember our story was Mr. Opposite. So here are the actual props for Mr. Opposite. You just click and, and there they are. You just print them out. This would be something you would need to print, obviously, because they're the story props. Um, here's our materials list. The materials list is designed like a grid. Everything, anything that I think you might need a little extra time to find or to put together is in red. We try to be very cognizant of the fact that you're in your home and not in a center, so the things you have access to are going to be different. And then things you might want to collect here or purchase, like applesauce if you don't have applesauce. And then anything you want to let parents or guardians know would be here. And there's a materials list for each unit. The provider's review is just something you can complete at the end about how you felt the unit went. This add and enhance was again another component suggested by a customer to help with the environmental assessment. It gives you ideas of things that you can add to the different areas to help enhance the environment. So art area, dramatic play, blocks, literacy and writing, gross motor, manipulative, and there's one of these for each unit as well. Here's the letters and literacy that I just mentioned. So this is designed for those children you feel are ready developmentally to talk about letters, letter sounds, words, sentences. And what we do is we take the activities in the user's guide, here's one sorting by size on page five, and we give you ideas on different letters you might want to incorporate with those children who are ready 
and how to do that. And then some of them are going to be like specific letters, but they might be many others depending on what you're doing. Okay, so it's important to note that this is just for those children who you think are ready to do this. We do not cover like letter of the week or number of the week. We integrate those things in as we think they are meaningful. Um, but this is a way to take that a step further for you, the children you think are ready. All right, and then here's the customized individualized plan in PDF form and in Word that we talked about where you can customize the lesson plans based on each individual child. The All About My Week report is designed to go home at the end of the week and it's just a little snapshot of each child and you know what they're learning how to do, what they're getting very good at, where they spend a lot of their time. This is available in Spanish as well as English. This is the family letter, which is also available in both languages, Spanish and English. This, because it is a PDF file, you don't even need to print it out if you don't want to. You can just save it, download it to your computer, and then send it as an attachment in an email. But it gives them an overview of the unit, but it also talks about things they can do during bath time, meal time, when they're out and about, bedtime, and then usually there's a song or a rhyme or something they can do down here. Um, again, available in English and Spanish. The individualization web we talked about, that's the one where you can individualize each unit to the children's interests and or needs. Our digital family notes, think of this as like a photograph on your phone, on your cell phone. You can save this to your picture roll and then it can actually be texted to parents if you want. Um, you could of course print it out, you could also email it, but it's digital and there are two of these for each unit. And then here are just those make it sheets we saw within the lesson plans. Um, so does anybody have any question about any of the components? This is just one unit we went through. Um, remember there are two. The second one for the month of January, if I scroll down here, oh and here's where you would get the Spanish family letter, Spanish make it sheet, Spanish all about my week, that would be found there, is up in the sky. And here are the English files and here are the Spanish files would be the same process. If you forget how to do all of this, let's say you're like, oh, this is a lot to remember. I'm never going to remember all this. I don't know how I'm going to do this. If you go under the support tab and you click over here to getting started with GWiz, there's a step-by-step -step guide that has screenshots that walks you through exactly what I just did, where I logged in and I went to this tab and I went to the units. So if you forget or if you're new and you're worried about like, how am I going to remember how to do all this? Just go to support, getting started, whoops, getting started with GWiz and you'll have that step-by-step -step guide. Okay, I'm going to pause right now because I do know our special guest is on the line. So I want to see, first of all, do does anyone have any questions about anything I covered regarding the components in the curriculum and how it's designed? And then I want to hand it over to her. Okay, we do have one question. It's, are we able to play the songs online so we can get the tunes? No, we do not have music. <laughs> but yes, most... but I have, yeah, I have a suggestion for that, actually. YouTube. Just go to YouTube and click on, say, let's say we write the tune to the Farmer in the Dell. You should be able to find the Farmer in the Dell tune. And sometimes if you just put Farmer in the Dell instrumental, you'll just get the instrumental version. And then you can just sing over that with the words that we've given you. Um, and there has been a couple of questions about uh, phone access. If you use the program through your phone, where you see across the top of the page right now where Beth is, where we have home, YG Wiz, our products, FCC tools. Those become purple bars and the tabs underneath those are underneath the purple bars. Right after support, you'd see a purple bar that says GWE customer and underneath that tab would be the units. And all you have to do, it would look like, um, Beth, if you'll click on GWE customer, I'm sorry, good. yeah, there you go. So you see this month's unit, that's what you would see on your phone. And under this month's unit are the files for the program. Um, but you've, you do need to be logged in um, through your phone to see that. Okay. Uh, and, and again, that would be after that purple bar that says support tab if you're logged in. If you're not logged in, you will not see GWE customer. So just keep that in mind. If you're not seeing it, that means you are not logged in. And this should say sign out instead of sign in. So right. whenever you sign in, that changes to sign out. So if it doesn't say 
sign out, then you know you're not signed in. And if you ever have a problem signing in, because it does happen occasionally, just go to support and go to contact us and there's a form that will take you directly it'll send an email directly to us and we'll do our best to help you as quickly as we can to figure out what's going on yeah yeah but the purple tabs will be there <laughs> if you are signed you'll still see the purple tabs if you're not signed in but you will not see GWE customer okay any other questions before we turn it over to our guest And Adrian, Adrian is, is that you? on the line. <laughs> yes, yes ma'am. Hey, Adrian. Um, I would like to introduce you. Adrian has been a customer with GWIS for a long time, and she lives in Miami, Florida. And we would love for her to share a little bit about GWIS and how it's helped her business, because that's not something that we can talk to. That's something she could talk to. And she is totally open to questions. So if, as you're listening to her talk, you have questions specifically about how she uses the curriculum, how it's benefited her business, um, please type them in the question box and then Sherry will read them out and Adrian will uh, respond to them. So with that said, I'm going to mute myself and let Adrian take it over. Take it over, Adrian. Hello, everyone. Um, so like she said, my name is Adrian Donaldson. I'm the proud owner of Jitterbug Learning Center. I've been operating my family home daycare for six years now. Um, and I've used GWIS all six years. So when I first opened, I opened in December. So I wasn't too much looking for a curriculum. I was just looking for children. Um, and once they started coming, I was like, oh no, I gotta teach. <laughs> so GWIS was the first thing I found. Um, and I liked it because it was digital. I'm a green school. So being able to just print what I need, email what I need to the parents, it was so much more convenient. Um, to keep real to, you know, my principles of saving trees. I love GWIS for three main reasons. The first one is it is made just for us. Oh, I have gone to many trainings. I watched many video clips. I've gone to a lot of different things. And I have yet to, seen a, to see a lot of mixed age group representation. Um, so to see a curriculum that was made for my specific setting, was a blessing to me um, and I enjoyed it for that reason. I was able to have one lesson plan for my infants, toddlers, school age, VPK and aftercare. Um, and it kept me organized. It kept me watching my time, making better choices with time management, um, exploring new ways to teach. It was no longer dittos. I said, do away with the dittos. They had a lot of hands-on activities um, and I liked that. And you know, it was very organized. The second thing was they support my diverse group. Um, when I first opened, I'm African-American. I had a lot of African-American and Haitian descent children. Uh, then I turned a corner and I had Hispanic children and Asian children. And I'm like, where are they coming from? So G Wiz was another uh, curriculum that represented my children and allowed me to teach and, and be a appropriate and respectful to all of their cultures. And then the third thing is, they're not afraid to get messy. They have messy activities, they have painting activities, they have clay ideas. Um, and I'm a messy teacher. I love to make a mess. And I love to have the kids help me clean up. So not only do they, you know, encourage you to be messy, but they encourage you to teach the children's independence, self help skills, how to wash their hands, how to brush their teeth. They even have a checklist that I use with my parents on monitoring how many times they brush their teeth. Um, and it's just, it keeps a partnership between me and my parents. I love the curriculum because I can customize it. What I tell people, because I'm also a trainer for GWIS. So when I do my trainings for GWIS, I tell them um, this curriculum is for every type of teacher. If you are new to the field, and you need something that is down to a T, spells everything out, helps you from A to Z, from the minute you walk into work to the minute you leave work, GWIS is the one for you. But if you're a veteran teacher like myself, who just needs something that is a lesson plan that I can have posted and help guide my teachers when I'm out or I'm absent, 
um, but still allow me to be creative and open, this is the curriculum for you. It reaches every type of educator in every setting. Um, I have a early educators VIP club where I create lesson plans for different centers that join my VIP club. Believe it or not, I use GWIS curriculum to guide my lesson plans for my VIP group. And many of them turn around and say, well, how do you come up with this stuff? What do you, and I'm like, gee whiz. And I encourage the centers, join them. Although it's a family child care home curriculum, you can create a unity within your center where your infant classroom, your toddler classroom, your VPK classroom, your aftercare program is all working on the same lesson. And you just make it appropriate for each age group. So for example, today was opposites. And we had to do, um, in the lesson plan, and G Wiz it said something about touching and feeling different um, temperature things. So we did touch and feel hot cloths. That was yesterday. So we had a hot cloth and a cold cloth. And the kids were able to touch it. Then we played musical chairs where we put the cloth on the chair and they got the dance around the chairs. And whoever sat on the cold rag was out and whoever sat on the hot rag was the music player. So we were able to switch up roles and allow the children to be free and play. Um, we also did, today we talked about young and old. So we asked the parents to send in a baby picture and we had the children use mirrors and they looked at the baby picture and they looked at themselves in the mirror. They looked at the baby picture, looked at themselves in the mirror and they got to see the difference. That wasn't in G Wiz lesson plan, but because of the way G Wiz structured their lesson plan and their guide, I was able to be open and creative with it. Um, another thing that I really, really love is their books. Um, whenever they have, like this week, they had the Mr. Opposites. Mr. Opposite was a guy who's really, really silly. He does everything the opposite. He's supposed to eat hot soup, but he gets something cold. I like it because they give you the material and it's so open. They tell you, oh, you can put it on popsicle sticks and act it out. I'm like, no, I wanna do a step further. I'm going to make a video book. And I did that. I recorded my voice and I read the book. I uploaded it to YouTube. And when it's time for a story time, I can pull my story up onto on my TV, which is a smart TV. I can pull up YouTube. I pull up the video book and my kids listen to it and they laugh because they say, oh, Miss Adrian, your voice sounds silly because I changed my voice. And I do silly things and they really like it. So G Wiz isn't the curriculum that puts you in a box and keeps you there. It allows you to be free. It allows you to be creative. It allows you to tap into your inner teacher, your inner child, and allow you to be free with it. But if you need that structure and that rigorous um, back to back to what you need to do, they still can meet that expectation for you. Um, any questions, anything that you want me to specifically talk on? Uh and again, you'll have to type your questions in the box and I can read them to um, Adrian. Um, and Adrian, thank you so much for joining us tonight and sharing your personal experience. I think that always means a lot um, coming from someone that's actually um, boot, boots on the ground, so to speak, so you yeah. know exactly what's going on. Yeah. Um, but or any questions that you have, please just uh, type them in and let us Okay, is there an app perhaps? No, we don't have an app. I'm sorry, but um, that's probably quite a bit of money to, to um, create an app. We, you can access the program via the phone like um, we were talking earlier. Um, it could be that it, it does seem to prefer Chrome um, and just depending on the browser that you use on your phone, it, that, that could be an issue but um, we do not have an app at this time. Um, and we had one question where somebody would like to call you, Adrian, and chat with you. Um, yes, please do. <laughs> okay, I have her number and then maybe I can share it with this person. I'm not gonna do that over the, with everyone tonight, but I'll, I'll share it with her if, if that's okay with you, Adrian. Oh, that's just fine. If anybody <laughs> wants to reach out to me, that's perfectly fine. I'm a trainer for GWIS and I'm a user of GWIS. So if you're looking for that deep insight knowledge of how you can do something, okay. I'm definitely a go-to girl. One. Um, 
Okay, we've got one other question um, from a provider in uh, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, or Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and wanted to know if this curriculum can be used for the youngster rating. Beth, are you familiar? Yeah, she's talking about Young Star. Yes. Um, oh, if you go to, I'm actually on the, if you scroll down here, I know Young Star does not have a an approved list, but if you scroll down here to the U.S. map and click here and then go to Wisconsin, um, just scroll down, then you'll see the alignment documentation for Wisconsin, which is what you would need for Young Star. And let's just see. That is all we have. We don't have any any more questions yet. Um, but again, Adrian, we want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. And uh, this webinar is has been recorded, and it'll take us just a bit to uh, get it up to get the uh, YouTube up on our web page. Um, and Beth, you want to show everyone where that will live, where that recording will live? Yes. So once we get done with the the webinar and it, it uploads, um, it's going to live right here under support webinar training videos. This is also where all of our other recorded videos are. For instance, the diversity one we mentioned earlier. And if you scroll down, there's the two handouts um, that we talked about. And if you would like a certificate of attendance, this is where you're going to click, but don't click that yet because I have to activate it. And I will be activating it as soon as we are done with the webinar. Just give me a minute or two once we close out. I have to go out and activate it. But it's a Google form. You'll answer the questions. And then at the end, once you hit submit, you're going to see a message pop up. And within that message, there's a link to click on that will allow you to download and print out a certificate of attendance for this. Um, but again, this this link right now, if you click, it's going to say it's not, not working. And it is not working because I haven't turned it on yet. Um, but anyway, that's where it is. So again, under, excuse me, under the support tab, and then over here to webinar training videos, that's where you will find it. We'll also upload this to our YouTube channel, by the way. Um, and we do have, for those of you who are not GWIZ customers, we're offering a special discount code. Um, I believe Sherry's going to type it in the chat box. Is that correct, Sherry? Sherry must be off the line. Anyway. Sorry, sorry. I forgot to tell. <laughs> I took myself on mute. I put it in the uh, chat box right in the beginning, but that code is WEB2020 for this year. Just WEB2020. And that will save you $10 off your first month, quarterly, or yearly payment. So if I go back to the home page, I'll show you where you would go to order. You just scroll down here and you have three choices where you can choose monthly, which is $18.95 a month. And that is not a per child cost. That is for um, one teacher and up to 12 children. Quarterly, which is three months, is $53.95. And for the whole year, it's $192.95. So you would save $10 off the, e e e any of these. So $10 off this, $10 off that, or $10 off that on just the first payment. So let's say you decided to go quarterly. Your first quarter would be $43.95, and then automatically, after that three months is over, you would be charged the $53.95. You can cancel at any time. You have total control over your subscription. Um, and we also do offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So let's say you try it for you know two weeks. You're like, this is just not working out. You just need to go to, again, support, contact us, and send us an email and say, look, I just started. I've been using it two weeks. It's not working, and I'd like to get a refund. Because um, we want you to be happy, and we know that not every curriculum works for every person. Um, but we really do hope that if you're a family child care provider, you'll give us a try. Then once you become a customer, for those of you who are customers, please don't forget that under here, there's always a referral coupon that you are welcome to share with other providers that saves them $10. Um, and it's a PDF, so you can just email it to your friends. Um, or if you're having, even if you're having a conference and you want to print some out to take 
and hand out, you are more than welcome to do that. Um, Adrian, I cannot thank you enough for being on the line tonight. I know that it's really hard after a long day with children, but we appreciate all your insights, especially since you've been a customer practically as long almost as GWiz has been around. <laughs> um, so I just want to thank you again. I want to thank all the people who joined us tonight because, again, for all of you, I know it's been a long day. I hope that you know we've provided information that helps you know more about GWiz, and if you're a customer, helps you use it even better than you're already using it. Um, again, if you have questions, the best way to reach us is email. Under the support, uh, contact us. That's the best way to, to reach us. And again, under that same support tab, this is where you're going to go to get your certificate in about five minutes once we close out because I, I have to log in. I have to activate that. Um, any final questions for Adrian, for myself, that we can answer? There is one question um, for Adrian or for us. It's just Adrian or GWS have a blog with implementation ideas. Adrian, do you have a blog? I mean, we post things all the time under like uh, holidays and things like that. Um, but I know, but um, and we have our blog site, which we write articles about different topics, um, all all types of topics. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I do have a blog. It's um, at my website, jitabugtrainings.com. Okay, great. Adrian, thank you for that. Um, one, other, one other question. If anyone has an iPhone 10R, 10XR, if you could contact customer service and just let me know how it's working for you. We have one provider that is having trouble with, it's an iPhone 10XR. Uh, and if you're able to access your file, the files using that phone, 10XR, please just send a note to customer service and then um, I'd be glad to re maybe I can contact you and find out if you're having any issues. And that's pretty much it. But thank you again, everyone, for coming. Again, Beth's gone over everything about it being recorded. One suggestion I will have is when you leave the site, sign out. Don't just close your computer, but sign out because it, there is like a limit of three devices. And if you don't sign out and you come in on your phone, you may have trouble with um, too many devices signed in. So just always sign out of your account and sign back in. And that's for protection um, with the number of devices so that, you know, if someone else is on your account, is using your account it, it's not going to work so anyway uh, that was just kind of a little housekeeping tidbit uh, but with that said thank you guys for coming and we're going to close the webinar out tonight and thank you so much give me five minutes to activate that uh, uh, the follow-up form with the um, certificate and uh, if you have any problems again support and contact us okay thank you thank you Adrian good night, good night everybody good night